So today is more of a serious take as we talk about Splatoon 3. We got a lot of information about the game and even its own dedicated Nintendo Direct. So today, I want to talk about what this game has to offer. Does it look like it's going to be a huge brand new fresh start? Or does it look like something that's not going to be that interesting after a couple months? I've gathered information from people online because it very much is split. I see a lot of creators talking about how this game just doesn't look that good. It doesn't look that different from what we have already gotten. And I see a lot of people obviously also saying that it looks amazing. It looks 10 times better than what they thought. So today I'm going to piece everything together from the direct from any other trailer information and you know details that we received and talk about what I think all together. If you like what I have to say today please make sure you leave a like and subscribe because you guys have been supporting the recent Splatoon video so much and I thank you a lot on that because I am super excited for this game regardless of what is going on with this game but I am very excited to get my hands on this game and I would love to play with you guys as well. So make sure you leave a like and subscribe because there's going to be lots of Splatoon playing here here in the next month. So really, in a broad sense right now, many people are divided, saying that this game feels like Splatoon 2.5, or really, you know, once again, being Splatoon 2, just more of Splatoon, and a lot of other people that may be more competitive players and more players that notice the little details might notice that this is definitely a different game. Let me talk where I come from real quick so I can give some validation a little bit. I started Splatoon the second it was announced. I jumped on board and was so excited to see Nintendo's very first kind of take on the shooter. And I was so excited to see what was going to come out of it. And of course, trying that first test fire and that first kind of open beta, I was immediately hooked. And I played Splatoon 1 for so many hours, I think it's impossible to calculate. I got to the highest possible rank and I played nonstop. I played Splatoon 1 until the very first day of Splatoon 2. Even through the test fires for Splatoon 2, I was still going back to Splatoon 1. But when Splatoon 2 launched, I played for about a solid year non-stop, and then I kind of got burnt out. And maybe it was just because it was so similar to the first game, I kind of just felt like I've done all this before. I've done all this ranking and, you know, you know, trying to get my rank as high as possible, and now there was a new ranking, and I was just like... I don't know, I just kind of got burned out very quick and after playing the campaign and you know kind of 100%ing that, I felt like I was kind of done with the game. Now we have Splatoon 3. What is going on with this game and how am I going to feel? How addicted am I going to be to this game? Is it going to be even lower now since we're continuing down that same path? Or am I going to be just as excited as I was with the first game? Well, thanks to the first and the second game, I have so much knowledge about this game and how it works and the inner workings and even the more competitive side of it, so I'll be able to share what I think completely. So let me see if I can break this down in kind of categories. And the first thing I'm going to start off with is obviously the main multiplayer, the Turf Wars and of course the Ranked Mode. So Turf War is Turf War, there's not much else you can do with that, and that's always going to be the same. I really don't have a big problem with this one, you know, this should always stay very basic. This is the casual game mode that really made Splatoon Splatoon in the first place. You know, ink the most territory to win and take out opponents when you can. Now, of course, I think it still would have been a little cooler to see different types of Turf War, maybe 3v3s or even a shorter 1v1 maps or maybe even bigger maps that kind of expand Turf War to 5v5 or 6v6 would be really cool. Just a giant Turf War with just more players on each team would be really cool. I'm starting to get the impression that Nintendo can't handle more than eight players on a map for some reason, and I'm not quite sure why. I mean, even looking at the new Splatfest mechanic where you have 2v2v4, yeah, it's still eight. They weren't able to make it 4v4v4 and have 12 people in total, which does make me wonder what's going on with that. I'll touch more on that later, but I think it does come down to more casual play. There's not a lot of extra stuff to do as a casual Splatoon player. You know, if you want to play any other mode, you're going to have to get competitive and play along the ranks, because every other mode is still tied to rank mode. You can't really play them casually. So you're literally only looking at Turf War. Now, there's players out there that seriously just want to play Turf War and Turf War only, and that's cool. Good for them. You know, I can understand that completely but at the same time there might be players that want to try something new uh, without getting absolutely destroyed by people who played nothing but endless hours of Splatoon 1 and 2. I want to talk about the maps real quick before we jump into ranked because they did do something right here so Splatoon 1 launched with five maps Splatoon 2 launched with only eight maps but surprisingly enough, Splatoon 3 is going to launch with a whopping 12 maps. Now, this is really good. I am so glad that they're finally expanding this. We're finally going to have multiple options right away, day one. But if I'm not mistaken, there's only four new maps, with a whopping eight of them being old ones coming back. Eight with only four new ones in a new game. That's kind of not too great. I like seeing old maps again, especially from Splatoon 1 that we haven't seen return in Splatoon 2, so that does have a little cool factor there, but 
yeah, we need new maps. We need new designs. We need new levels. I like the ones they picked so far. The maps look great, but I think this is where a lot of people are, in fact, going to get upset. Of course, there's more maps coming in later updates, and that's normal. I like one looks like, like an Egyptian tomb or something in the desert, which is really cool. So I am very excited to see what else they have up their sleeves. Ranked mode has been turned into Anarchy Battles, which is just kind of a new name. But this is something else that kind of made me a little upset. So all the ranked modes are just the ranked modes that we already know and love. They didn't really add any, not a single new rank mode right now, which is kind of weird. You have Rainmaker, you have Clam Blitz, you have Splat Zones, you have Tower Control. Where's the new? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just like, those are four rank modes that we've been playing for the last four to five years. We need a new rank mode, and I'm sure there's going to be one eventually, but right now, it's just the same exact online multiplayer. And I know a lot of people are going to say, of course, it's just a shooter, you know, in the next game in the steps of that evolution. You know, why would they change so much that works so well? I understand that. I'm not expecting them to change the identity of Splatoon, but they do have to add more to what we have been playing already for the last five years. Right now, why is there any reason in the world to go pick up this game and play this online multiplayer when you can literally play it on Splatoon 2 right now? And a lot of these stages are in Splatoon 2 right now. So what's really changing that fact besides like weapons and specials? Not a lot, but yeah, that is something that definitely needs to be fixed. There needs to be at least two or three brand new ranked modes and some other type of, you know, modes to get people to play something new, you know, get something fresh out there. And I'm actually a little afraid that they may not even add anything. They didn't even talk about future modes or anything, you know, later on in the updates. So we'll see if that ever comes. And right now I'm a little worried about that point. One thing I think I might like is the new take on Anarchy Battles. It says win 5 in Triumph, lose 3 and you're out. So it's like a new method of how to progress in the rank, I guess. And I like, kind of like that. It's a new, you know, kind of unique take because I know sometimes the ranking sucked. You could win like 5 games in a row at higher ranks and then lose 1 game and still get knocked down a rank somehow. Like you, like you didn't even make any progress the last 5 games. So I like this new formula. It really works in my opinion. I also like this formula because sometimes, you know, your team just doesn't play that well and this is a team based game and this is a ranking you know on your individual ranking so sometimes you could go off in a match while your team doesn't do much so this kind of helps that but i don't know if it's because i didn't have expectations that high or maybe it is that good but i am extremely excited for the weapons this time around and maybe it just kind of caters more to what i wanted i wanted an ink bow for so long so now we have the stringer and of course i really really wanted like a sword weapon and we have freaking splatanas it's a splatoon katana like what else could you want this is just perfect for me i love how just cool and unique these items are obviously there's probably gonna be really cool different classes and stuff for the stringer that just makes them shoot differently but i am really excited for the splatanas we've seen two classes already one that was a uh, more heavier stamp and then one that's a wiper that's more quick and agile and i love this because dude you could pair this with like ninja squid and just go crazy just actually having a weapon that looks like its main focus is to kill people is super exciting you know and that makes me super excited to wield this because i'm one of those type of people that just loves wiping out the other team as quickly as possible for my team to get you know more turf painted and the specials they're great too there's a lot of them that are like reimaginings of stuff that we've already had in the past um you know and there's just some crazy new ones that i just cannot believe they came up with i love the one that kind of opens up like a little store where people can come by and get a perk and move on that's super cool there's one that sends out shock waves on the ground that the you know enemies have to jump over or like kind of marks them like a uav there's just so much stuff jam-packed into this game. The specials are actually probably one of my favorite parts of this game. They are so unique. They are so cool. I can't wait to see, you know, what else is going to come with these specials and stuff and, like, how they're going to match up with their weapon classes that well. Um, but obviously, yeah, I love these. And of course, there's some classics returning as well and stuff, and there's some cool new, you know, subs, and, you know, th the weapons are great. It's awesome. I hope they still add, like, maybe one more new weapon class or type later on in updates, or maybe they'll add, like, one or two more. Who knows? But uh, we know that, the, you know, support's going to go on for, like, a year to two years afterwards. It's going to be a lot of support for this game, and I just can't wait to see what else is coming. But right now, off the start of the game, I really like the addition of two brand new weapons, a whole bunch of new specials. This is really good.
talk about the hub area things to do now i think there's actually a lot of cool like little things to go visit and you know go look at now like of course you have your shops for your your headgear your body and your shoes but they also have a new shop where you can like get like cool little decorations i think for your locker and you get to go customize your own locker which is really cool it's like completely unneeded but it works because it's something new and something fun to do and you know you can have your own locker that represents you when you join friends and stuff you could probably see it which is just super cool so that obviously adds a new store in and of itself for those things um you also have like this table turf war game that you can play now in the lobby i'm not really that interested in it but you can play it if you want um it's just a cool little extra thing that you can play with people online i guess it's just like the arcade games of the old games but you can actually play against real people which is cool i'm not much into card games i might give it a try a couple times but now watch me get addicted to it i don't know we'll see uh but it's just another cool thing to do in the lobby and i love the things that they added this time around you know in the general hub world i will say this i've been kind of back and forth with this game so far during this video giving positives and negatives but throughout this entire game and this experience and everything that I've seen so far this is probably the thing that confused me the most and made me the least excited I am not excited for salmon run the next wave it is literally salmon run all over again yes there's some new boss salmon in but it didn't look like there were a lot and they did get to show off some new ones and it looked like there was only around two or maybe three of them and that was about it. You know, you have the new, you know, Mega Ball Salmon or something at the end, and they claimed that there was going to be more outside of, I guess, just the Godzilla fish, uh, but we didn't really see any more. And I don't know if those are going to be coming way later on, but there was really nothing added. They added one new thing, which is, you know, they will add, I think, once a month, there'll be a big wave where, you know, they'll come into, like, the regular multiplayer maps, but it's not even really the entire multiplayer map. They like cut off a small circle in the middle of the multiplayer map and surround the rest with water. Totally get, maybe I'm having unrealistic expectations for something else to change. I just wanted to kind of maybe bigger maps and more maps where you kind of like expand and like move around more, but I don't know. This just doesn't seem that much fun to me. Maybe I'm just not a big fan of Salmon Run and that's completely fine. If you love Salmon Run and you love this, that's great. I just wasn't a big fan of it. But I do think they confirmed that Salmon Run is available every day at all times, so you can now play it whenever you want instead of waiting for specific times, which is a really cool thing. Now I want to talk about the story mode. It's kind of hard to talk about this mode because they still didn't show us a lot of it. We just got a couple like quick glimpses of what's going to happen, and it looks like it's kind of a combination of Splatoon 1, Splatoon 2, and the Octo Expansion missions, where it looks like there's just many different types and styles of missions kind of spread across the entire, you know, story mode genre, which is really cool. I like that. I would like to see another option with more of an open world type of aspect, which would be really cool, but maybe we'll get that in the expansive DLC that apparently is coming. So I don't know what even that is going to offer, but we're going to have to wait and see. We'll talk about that in another separate video. But I love so far, you know, the idea of just having a mix of missions between the Octo Expansion and the regular kind of make your way to the end of the stages missions that we've had in the past. Once again, we didn't really see anything that's going on with the story so far, so it's hard to speak on anything else. So what is my final verdict? Well, of course, there's going to be new stuff added to the game and stuff added for the next couple of years, and we're not going to be able to fully tell how good this game is probably until 2023, 2024. But for now, from what we've seen, I can say it's a both a mixture. There's lots of good things to be excited about, and there's lots of things that also really look the same as the past two games, and that really hasn't gotten improved on too much. Still so much we don't know about the game and how it's going to turn out and how the new weapons and specials and stuff are going to shake it up and even the new movement in the squid form. So there's a lot of stuff to still talk about and go over. I'm very excited to see, you know, what else this game has to offer when I actually get my hands on it. But right now, it really just depends on you. I can definitely see both sides of the story here. I completely understand people thinking that this game still looks and plays the same and, you know, people thinking that this is a completely new experience. I get both sides of the story here, but also I kind of looking at this in a new way. I see Splatoon 3 as kind of maybe the new ultimate of everything Splatoon before we get a fresh start in the next game, adding new weapons and everything, because I do think eventually they are going to have to kind of not really reboot it, but soft reboot it and change the way it works. But we'll see what happens in the future, and of course I want to go over like what we could be expecting from this game and future updates and stuff, but thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below in your opinion, and thank you so much. Leave a like and subscribe if you guys enjoyed today's video, and like always, I'll see you all on the next one. See you guys.